the biblical truth of our hymns. And we have another wonderful hymn today to look at. Like I said, this is not all a study on bad hymns. They're good hymns. And this one names Jesus. Jesus paid it all. Elvina Marble Hall. And Elvira Marble Reynolds was born in Alexandria, Virginia, 1818, to Captain David Reynolds. She married Richard Hall of Westmore County, Virginia, who died 1859. They had at least three children. In the spring of 1865, Hall wrote Jesus Paid It All on a fly leaf of the New Loop of Zion in the choir of the Methodist Episcopal Church in Baltimore. Hale shared the lyrics with her pastor who connected her with the church organist, John Grape, who had recently shared a new tune he had written. <laughs> so here's a, here's a, a new uh, poem written. Here's a new tune written, come together by the pastor of the church. Hall and Grape worked to finish the hymn together, and then at the pastor's urging, so we got three people to thank for this for this hymn. I'm glad Hall didn't say, well, I'll stay home. Urging that they sent the hymn to Professor Theodore Perkins, publisher of the Sabbath Carols periodical, which he received its first publication. It has been a favorite of many Christians. Hale was a member of her church for 40 years and in 1885, Hall married uh, Thomas Myers, a Methodist minister at the home of her daughter, Ella. Evelyn Hall died in Ocean Grove, New Jersey on July 18, 1889. So from this, we set forth to a woman who has written this, I first person. And a lot of the poems and hymns that we have today written by the first person were never meant to be written in a hymnal. Many Christians, many people, worldly Christians, many unsaved people who gather in the church and get up and say, I surrender all, don't. Many of the such three categories I mentioned, I love to tell the story, and they don't. And yet, when we find some of these hymns, they weren't for public. They were personal hymns written to God from their own. I do that. A lot of in, I listen to a lot of instrumental hymns while I'm reading my Bible, or even when I have a hymn on the CD in the car, the, the words are doing... I will sing out my heart to the Lord with my own words. And none have been penned, none have been written down. They won't be found in a hymn, no, but they'll be found in the heart and the ears of God. And there are hymns that I have sung personally to God that no one else is able to sing. As there are words that people have lived in Christ Jesus. And wrote and sung and, and portrayed in art or whatever it be. I can't. Paul says in the book of Acts, and I'm not going to quote it uh, complete, but, you know, I am innocent of the blood. I have not refrained from all. I came in a lot of contact with a lot of people yesterday. This short journey, I didn't reach out to all. I could not make that book, that, that that verse in the book of Acts of life verse of mine. I'd be found a liar. And many who sing, I surrender all, or I love to tell the story, are lying. Here's a personal song by a woman, and it's a true very fact. Jesus paid it all. But what she's writing about herself, I can sing too, because I am a miserable, rotten sinner. It is my sins that nailed Jesus to the cross. I hear the Savior say, Jesus, 
Thy strength indeed is small. That is true. I've been saved since 1987 and I buckled under. I fell. I collapsed. I fell to sin. I have a sin that besets me and I fall to it. And many times I know I fall to it. I've had circumstances, instances in my life that I fell. Why? Because I'm in this flesh and blood. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And the flesh is at enmity with the spirit, and the spirit is at enmity with the, with the flesh. I'm not a perfect Christian. I never will be until I get the glory. Satan knows where to attack me. And the means that he uses to attack me is, if I can use the word awesome, like, man, he knows who I am and he knows my being. You see, Satan doesn't need to tempt me with a can of, or a bottle of beer. That don't do nothing for me. Now for somebody else, yeah. And when I fall to my particular sin, I'm not going to tell you what it is, as somebody would fall for beer. Satan would know how to use that tactic. And alcoholism, a sin, but the very fact of alcoholism is a strength that many Christians don't have because of the boa constrictor effect that alcohol has on their life. My strength is, is small, Lord, and I need thee every hour. Paul says, that which I want to do, I don't do, and that which I don't want to do, I do. There's where the strength lies. Oh, I can lift weights. I could go to the gym. But how am I under life's troubles and problems and witnessing him? I'm not a perfect father. I'm not a perfect husband. And I'm, well, I'm not a, a widower now. The Lord will help me to be a, a husband again. I'm not a perfect uh, Christian. And I'm not a perfect church member to, to my church. Because my strength is small. I didn't say I didn't have any strength. Child of weakness. Man, somebody would sing that hymn. Uh, 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 that's not me. I'm strong. I'm, look how good I am. Look how great I am. Pride and arrogancy cannot say child of weakness. That's why pride and arrogancy and proud, that's why it's a sin. And when I can weep to the Lord about my sins, and when I can plead to God for help with my sins, and help for today, I'm weak. The devil, I said, already knows where to attack me. He knows where to attack you. And if you go in your own strength, you will fall today. I'm not going to say that, oh, we're always going to be on top or always going to win. No, because we know what? We're, we're, we're strength is small and, our, and we're a child of weakness. And the devil knows that right moment to get us. You know, when you talk nautical and ships, a grain of sand inside of a rope, a coil of rope, won't do great damage right away. 
but within time it will. And if you look at a grain of sand under a microscope, it's sharp. Watch and pray. The writer is saying, Jesus is saying, watch and pray. And he told that to the disciples, watch and pray. And what did he find when he came back twice? Three times. They were asleep. So could you not watch one hour? 60 minutes? And he went back the second time and found them asleep. And he came back the third time and found them asleep. Peter, James, and John, the three above disciples that followed Jesus closer than the other nine. And in his agony of prayer, before he would be tortured, and crucified. They were asleep on duty. What was their duty? Sit here, watch. And they fell asleep. You know what I do? I fall asleep at the Christian helm. Give that guy over there a gospel track, and I, I forgot to bring him. Or I'm fussing around, and I can't get it quick enough. Read your Bible, and this one thing turns to another, turns to another, turns to another, turns to another, and then you find out you didn't read your Bible. Find in me Jesus. Thine all in all. Don't look to your employer. Your paycheck. Your online selling. Your status quo. Your sports team. Your favorite actor, actress. Not even your pastor your associate pastor, or your church. Look in me, find in me, Jesus, your own all. When I preach on the street, and I, I, I preach against religion because religion can't save you. Now, if you're saved, go to a Bible-believing, King James-centered, Christ-honored and loving, doctrinally correct church to learn and grow. But that's not going to save you. And supposedly, I would assume that the main audience that would listen to someone like that is Christian. So let me direct you as a Christian, and it's happening today. Don't believe it won't. If you're putting your all in all in your church, let's start there first. And you go to church Sunday morning, basically. And there's no one in the parking lot. And you go up to the church doors and they're locked. And they will never open or be unlocked by your church, anybody again. Your church has closed. Jesus Christ will never close. Jesus Christ is not even 24-7. Seven. seven days a week. He's eternal. And if you put your all in all in your church and your church closes its doors. Pastor said, no more Wednesday night service. Nobody's coming. They're doing that. We're going to give up on Sunday evening because, you know, that's not important. You know, the, the electricity is just too much for the amount of offering we get. And it's happening. Or congregation, and this, this is something I've seen. Our church is going to mer merge with this church because to get, I mean, separately, Bible-believing churches 
they and us, we can't do it alone anymore, but if we come together, we might be able to keep serving the Lord because we're dying. And I'm not saying merging two churches together is wrong. The way people are attending churches today, you may have to. But what if your church is its all in all and the doors closed? Is that the end of who you are in Christ? No, it's got to be in Jesus. And when the church door closes, you got to go find somewhere else to worship God. You may have to take part in doing something to worship God. I've been kicked out of churches. I've had to have in my dining room, my living room, my family church and try to bring people together. I have been in churches where everything is just cockeyed with the Bible and stiff it out until we could find a greater church. Now I'm not saying, listen, there's no perfect church. But if I were to rest my faith in the very first church that I visited, I'd be, I was the same last night to myself in prayers. I imagine what one person, I, I'm on my mind for praying. I wonder what that person turned out to be today. Because that church is going sour. Now, number two, what if you put your all in all, not in Jesus, but the pastor? And I have seen that. I know a congregation today, it's about the pastor. What do you do if your pastor leaves, goes to another church? You move. I think my mom said that with her church. They got a new pastor. He moved and many of the congregation moved. To go be, you're all in all, it's not in Jesus. It's in the man, the pastor. And what's worse, what if your pastor died? Would your all in all die also? Now, I know people right now in the church, the pastor died, and the, and the man that took over is not doing too well. And I believe, listen, the church is not doctrinally sound. It is foul. And it's time to find somewhere else. Well, if you're going to leave the church just because your pastor's gone to another church or has died, and that's it, you're done. You're not even going to give the other man a chance. Your all in all is not in Jesus. It's in the man, the pastor, or associate pastor. I mean, I don't go to revival meetings because they didn't bring in this man this, this spring one. I'll be there in the fall when th that man. Paul had a problem with, with the Corinthian church. I'm a Paul, I'm a Paulus, I'm a Timothy. And your all in all is not in Jesus, but it's in a man evangelist or special preacher that is a sin jesus died but he arose from the grave and he's forever living that man may die lord lord that means he's higher than we are I'm lower than he is. He's on the high stand. The Bible says God, Jesus, husband, wife, children, job. And when you put the job of head of church, you can't call him Lord. Your job has become your Lord. And you won't go to church because your daughter has a baller, ballerina's recital, or your son has softball that night, and you go to the softball or, or the rehearsal. God is not your Lord. Your children have become Lord. Listen, I've been married twice. I've been middle, widowed twice. Both my wives had to understand that I love God and Jesus Christ more than I love them. And I had to understand that they loved God and Jesus Christ more than me. And that's proper. That's why families are breaking down. It's not God, Jesus, the husband, the wife, 
the children and the job. You got it all out of whack. And then the Lord's not your Lord no more. The boss comes up to you. Well, you know, I want you, I, I want you to work Wednesday night. Well, we have church Wednesday night. You were here Sunday night. If you were here Sunday night, you could be here Wednesday night. I had when I was working for the newspaper, they knew I, they knew I was a strong uh, Christian. They knew my ethic. They knew my character, and we delivered to two casinos. And they knew I would not even have anything to do with the casino bars or anything like that. And it came one time that I mean they had this, this big thing, whatever it was. They had to have these papers delivered to the casino. I was the very last person they came to. And they set forth and put into mold an operation that I didn't have to go to the casino, but I was on the grounds of the casino, and they would have everybody else take care of everything because they knew I, I wouldn't compromise. But they knew I was a dedicated worker. God was still my Lord. I still got to serve the Lord correctly. I, I can still honestly say today, I have never been in a casino. I think casinos are wrong. I even go so far. All right, let me, let me go ahead and say it. This is wrong. Uh, you forgive me. When I delivered the newspapers, one of the places I had dropped off, and this was like 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, and I had to use the facility. There was a bar over there that was open, and I had to use the bathroom. I chose to go out in the woods than walk in the bar. That's all I'm going to say about that. You got to have standards. And when you lower your standards, then you lower the Lord of God and you put something else. Lord, now, 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 not, not tomorrow. Not when I get 18, not when I got my family established, not when I got my job, not when I've been married, not when my kids are growing. Now, indeed, assured, indeed, I find thy power, thy power. You know why thy power, Lord? Because I have no strength. I'm a child of weakness. That's what it is. I go in the power of God, the Lord, God Almighty, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, to be a husband or to be a father or to be a worker. Lord, I need your power because I'm going out in the world today. And, and if I live the Christian life and all they that live godly in Christ Jesus is going to suffer persecution. If I'm doing correctly, and I'm trying to. I know the devil's that. I know, I know right now in my life, I believe honestly that the devil's trying to stop me. Lord, I'm going out there. I'm going to do something today. I know the devil's going to be there. I already know basically, I'm not going to tell you my sin, but I know the devil's going to put that in front of me. I need your help. And I've seen God do that power. And I say, okay, I, I, you know, I, I don't know what goes out on in heaven, but you know, the Father says, uh, let's have him try on his own. You know, when you take that child and they're taking the first step, all right, take the hands away. <laughs> uh, not ready to walk on his own yet. And you got that child, you got him by the by the uh the, the handlebar, and you got that child, they're trying to ride the bike. They say, I'm gonna let go, let you go, and then bam, they smash on the ground. Not ready yet. And there's every time the Lord God will turn, all right, let's see how well he does this time. All right. You see that? Look at that. Look at that. He, he, and they'll be all right, let him go. Oh man. I can't believe he did that. In that moment, I come to the Lord, Lord. I failed. I got it right 10 times today. That 11th time, I failed. Why? Because I went under my own strength. I am, I, I am what? Weakness. I need your power. If it wasn't for the power of God, there would be no victory at all in sin. 
I would, I'm saved April 21st, 1987. If there was no power in God and Jesus Christ, I would never be saved and I would be going to hell and ready to burn for all eternity because my power can't do nothing. Listen, I went to the Catholic Church. I burnt the candles. I went to Matt. I did the feet five fold with the holy water. I, you know, called the priest, the father. I did all that. And all that power of that church or whatever religion out there has no power to save you. It has no power to get you over sin. Religion will have you to sin. So you can pay whatever that church tells you to pay to undo your sin, that you're going to go back out and do it again because it's profit to the church and religion. When I can say no to my sin and, uh, okay, that's power in God. And when you are presented with that sin and you fall and you got to confess your sin for God to forgive and to forget and to wash you, you were your own strength. You were sleeping on the job. Thy power and thine alone can change the leper's spot. Leprosy is a disease that starts off and it spreads throughout your body. You know what happens to a sinner when he's born in this world? He begins with the first sin of me, myself, and I. My diaper's not wet. I am not hungry, but I'm going to wake mom and dad up at 2 o'clock in the morning by screaming the daylight out. That's a sinner. I'm not going to let my, my mom's been taking care of me all day long. I'm just going to wail at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to wail for an hour and a half just to keep her up because it's about me. I love to be comforted and pampered. That's okay. Spot of leprosy. What's the next spot of leprosy? I grow up. I have a passion for chocolate chip cookies. Mom has chocolate chip cookies. They're in a cookie jar. It has not been dinner time. I am not allowed a cookie, but I go and steal a cookie. How did I steal a cookie? I didn't ask anybody for a cookie. You see that three o'clock in the morning, I'm gonna wake up my mom, I'm gonna wake up my parents, I'm gonna have a fuss because, because it's me. Now it's me again, I want a cookie and I know what the rules are. But I'm just going to take the cookie because it's me. I have gone from thinking of myself, going to thinking of myself, and now I've stolen. And then, when mom looks in the cookie jar and realizes I didn't put the cat back on the cookie jar, and goes, oh, gee, let's see. I didn't have a cookie. The dog can't have a cookie. Dad's at work, can't have a cookie. Uh, Stiley, did you have a cookie? No, the dog had the cookie. Was it me? Now I become a liar. The leprosy of sin has grown in my life. I get more and more. It was all about me. It's all about me. Now I'm stealing. Now to protect me, I'm going to lie. And I'm going to blame somebody else. Something else. Isn't that Adam and Eve in the garden? And then I grow up even more, and I and listen, my own person, uh, if my mom don't have gray hair, she should. I've caused many tears from my, from my mom, and I'm sorry I did. Bible says, honor thy mother and father. I didn't honor her properly. Oh, I did good, but I did bad, too. I'm a sinner. All about me for me, uh, nothing but me. Leprosy. Now, I, I with leprosy, I thought about me. I coveted time and attention that I really didn't need. Now I coveted a cookie and I stole, thou shalt not steal. And then I lied about it, so now thou shalt not bear false witness. I didn't give my mom due benevolence and care and respect I should have. Now, you know, I've not honored my mother and father. I grew up in a Catholic religion and I had idols in my heart. I definitely used the Lord's name in vain growing up. 
I had other idols in my heart. There was a time there, you know, the Joe Montana, the the, the 49ers, the, the three Pete, the four P and the Super. I was all into that mess. Leprosy of sin. And then melt the heart of stone. I became of age where I say, you know, you want to go to church anymore? No. Okay. That's okay. And then when my grandma came to me, said that she saw the church. It's not like the Catholic Church, and it's about Jesus and there's salvation. You can be saved. No, I don't want to go. Leave me alone. Get out of here. Shut up. Don't want to hear it. Don't invite me no more. Heart of stone. I don't want to hear it. Don't give me that. So finally, I went to church to shut my grandmother up. All right, all right. If I go to church with you Sunday morning, this will shut you up and you won't bother me anymore, correct? Okay, all right, fine, I'll go. That's a heart of stone. Add that to, a, to my list of sins. And when I heard the gospel Sunday morning, I didn't get saved right away. During that week, the Holy Spirit worked on my heart and the Sunday of the, the April 21st, 1987, I had them bring people from church to come talk to me. Joe Caswell opened up King James Bible and showed me that I was a sinner and I am. And I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior at my grandmother's coffee table in her living room at 773 Broad Street Extension, Waterford, Connecticut. God broke that heart. How's that? What'd you do to get saved? Nothing. I just went to church to shut my grandmother up. I was going to go to church. She was going to drop me home. She even picked me up. She's going to drop me home. That was it. I was not going to go anymore. And she would say, come to church. I said, listen, I went to church. I told you to shut up. I disrespected my grandparents. God broke my heart. The reason why I am preaching in the street, the reason why I am saved, the reason why I do these videos, the reason why I'm a doctor of theology, the reason why I try to grow Christians in the Lord, I try to show lost people about salvation, I want Christians to grow and get all the potential that God has for them, is because God broke my heart. I don't know where I would be today without the Lord, if I would even be here. Listen, the day before I got saved, I was smoking two or three packs of cigarettes a day. I was drinking Bacardi. I was going from job to job. I was just a, well, my my wife, Tracy, when I knew her in school, I said, I said what do you think I was when we, we went to school? I said, what do you think I was in school? I asked her, honestly, she said, you were a punk. You had no aim and all. I said, honest, okay, true, thank you. In the words of Tracy, my second wife was going home to glory. I was a punk with no aim. You know what broke that? You know, the fact is that my wife was, was happy and glorified. That my, I am marrying a preacher, man. And this guy goes out in the streets. This guy witnesses. This guy is going to teach us the Bible. And we have family Bible study. We read the Bible together. We pray together. Why? Because God broke my heart. I've been witnessing to my dad since April 22nd, 1987, and he has not have not gotten saved yet to February 12th, 2020, as far as I, I know, because God hasn't broken his heart yet. He won't allow God to break his heart. For nothing good, I want to make sure I break that. For nothing good have I. And I, in the public ministry, the number one thing, I've heard all kinds of things. The number one thing I get in my ministries is I'm good. Well, what is your good compared to my good? Listen, the man that's behind prison bars good is not as good as someone who has a job, has a wife, has children, and they're financially sound, and their life is good. A man in prison may think it's good to come through a window and take your stuff. Another man may think it's good to unlock the door, open up the house and say, hi, family. Here's my check, honey. Use it for the glory of the family. Another man's good is I want to love the Lord and do right and serve the Lord that saved me and loved me. 
Another good of somebody could be, well, I'm just going to go to church and I'm going to please God. See, when I go to church, God and all the angels are in heaven are happy. I know a guy whose good is, I'm going to try to stop the preaching and the angels don't want me, but I am going to heaven no, no matter what. That's, I'm a Baptist. And when I sing about my wife, it, it's a drunkard song of, of booze and whiskey. That's his good. Now, there's the Bible good. And what they mean when they say, oh, I I'm good, they never murdered anybody. <laughs> and eventually, when it works out, the judgment is God will allow them into heaven because they're good. No, that ain't it. It's not baptism. It's not church membership. It's not anything. To a Muslim, it is good that if they're an infidel, you kill them and get rid of them. Or you, you turn them into slavery too. It's a good for a Catholic to do all these things that the, that the Catholic Church says to do. It is good for Jehovah Witnesses to go knocking on the door with a magazine. It is not good for Stalin to challenge the Jehovah Witnesses to say that Thomas said, my Lord, my God, and you say God is not Jesus. To them, that's not good. But to God in heaven, in the Bible, God thinks that's good that I challenge the Jehovah Witnesses. And to the Jehovah Witnesses, in the eyes of God, that's not good. But the Jehovah Witnesses thinks they're good and thinks I'm not good. You've got to have the Bible, which is good. The good word, they say. Nothing good have I, whereby thy grace to claim. What do I have that, that can't be taken away? During the final part of the year 2010, after my first wife died, I lost it all. I lost my job. We lost the house. We watched them drive the car away. Lost the health insurance. We lost, we began as a me and my children, we began. So at that moment, if, if God were to end time and end everything, let's say by December 31st, 2010, God said, okay, day of reckoning, Stalin, what do you have for me? I ain't got nothing. Where's your house? It's not mine. Oh, where's your car? At an auction block. Where's your health? I got diabetes. I'm suffering. What do you have to offer me? Nothing. What's God going to say? Go to hell. And you get a you get a millionaire that comes up to God. All right, what are you going to offer me? I got a mansion. I got I got mansions up here that are built by Jesus Christ. So what? I got a yacht. Uh, it ain't going to go too good in the river of life. Well, I got fruit. I got the tree of life over here, and it blooms forever, and it's, it'll never die, and it has a sweet sense, and just romifies New Jerusalem. Well, I got gold. We walk on the street of gold up here. I got quarters. What's a quarter? I don't, I, I, uh, uh, Angel 45878, come here. Did you hear what a quarter is? He's offering me a quarter. I, I don't know what that is. You don't know either? I ain't going to do you no good. Well, you know, I, 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 went, I went to church. Dying thief. Come here. You trusted my son on, on your cross. Well, he was on the cross, correct? You did? Okay, yeah. All right. Jesus, is that true? Yeah, okay. Uh, Mr. Thief, did you go to church? Oh, you didn't go to church. And now you're in paradise. Church ain't the answer. And it can't be money because he stole everything he got. And when he died on that cross, he had nothing. <laughs> what he had was even his own. It was someone else's. 
Well, I was baptized. I was baptized by the deep Baptist first of of our. Now, I think, wait a minute. Come back here for me. All right, you were saved on the cross. Believe in my son on the cross. Did they take you down off the cross to be baptized? Were you sprinkled, baptized? You know, no. Just in okay, just in sweat. Okay, that's that's part of the curse. But all right, you weren't baptized. He wasn't baptized, and here he is in paradise. You want to try anything else? Nothing I, nothing, absolutely nothing do I have to offer God at all. When I die, I'm absent from the body and presence of the Lord. I don't know how it's going to be. All right. I don't think God's going to say this, but what gives you the right to be here? The blood of Jesus Christ. Well done. Come. Someone else, they die. What gives you the right to be here? I'm a Baptist. You're a what? I'm a Baptist. Gabriel, you want to come over here for this one? You heard Baptist? John the Baptist. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yep. Bible. This guy says he's a Baptist too. We have no Baptists in here. You want to try to? Oh, oh, I grew up as a cat. We have Catholics. We don't have no Catholics. I'm sorry, that's not going to work. You see, there's no Baptist, there's no congregation, there's no non-denominational, there's no Lutherans in heaven. Only those that Jesus paid it all. True Christians. And not just a name or a title, but by the very blood of Jesus Christ. And when you come to Jesus with what you have, you come up short. Whereby I, uh, for nothing have I, whereby thy grace to claim, I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's land, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. That's it. You get into heaven, not by Peter at the pearly gates. You get to heaven by the blood of God, Acts 20, 28. What's that blood? That blood is the blood that shed upon the cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. And when I brought that to the attention of a Jehovah Witness, Acts 20, 28, which said correctly in his New World Translation, God purchased the church with his own blood. Then I asked him, well, what? Well, actually, I asked him first. I said, the blood of Jesus on the cross, that's what purchased our sins. And he said, yeah. And I took him over to Acts 20, 28 and said, well, that's got to be God then. I stumped him on that one. That's a good one to stump him. Ask him, make him say that the blood of Jesus Christ, and then run him over to Acts 20, 28. It says, God purchased the church with his blood. And then they're going to, you know, some, you know, they're not the church. Then just let them go to hell. You did what you have to. And when before the throne, Miss Alvina, how dare you think you're going to go up to the throne of God? She's a Bible believer. The Bible says we go boldly before the throne of grace. We are seated already in heavenly places. This woman's a Bible. She is quoting from the scripture. In context, I'm going before the throne of God. So am I. I can approve of this hymn and I can sing of this hymn. So can you if you are born, if you're born of the blood of Jesus Christ, you are born again. Not of works. I stand in him complete. You don't add to salvation. Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. It's not a little blood and some bread. It's not a little blood and bread and beads. It's not a little blood, bread, and beads and a knick-knack patty whack, get me out of hell. It ain't that. There are people in religions out there, they got their religions on the on the mantelpiece of the fireplace. And even with a picture of Jesus. That ain't it. Jesus said, it is finished. Jesus is the natural preservative of God for our souls. 
anything extra to the salvation of Jesus Christ, the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Anything other than that is an artificial preservative and even Americans won't take artificial ingredients. Religion is an artificial ingredient not approved of God. I stand in him complete one day. I will be sinless perfection by Jesus Christ. Jesus died my soul to save. There it is. Why did Jesus die? For salvation. Well, you know, he upset the Jews and got them all. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. But he died for our souls. He died my soul to save. My lips still, my lips shall still repeat. Go out there and tell people Jesus saves. Go out there with the gospel. Go out there and tell people how Jesus saved your soul. That's what she's saying. Jesus paid it all. I've dealt with people and I've heard people say, you're dealing with somebody, well, God could never forgive me. Paid it all. Write down every single sin that man, man, from Adam to the baby just born. Write down every single sin that man can and will and has done in life. And there's not one of them sins on how many pieces of paper, I don't know there will be, that Jesus can't wash away your soul. I'll put them in three categories of what Jesus can cleanse us from all sin. Jesus paid it all. I can put it in three categories. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those are Satan's tools out of his toolbox for sin. One of those three, two of those three, all three of those three, Satan will use on an individual to get him to sin. Jesus paid it all. I'm reminded of a, of a bluish gray haired old lady that was bent over in Groton, Connecticut, and with tears told, God could never forgive. The wickedness that I have done. And you got to look at that woman and say, what on earth? But, but the answer is, yes, he can. The answer is, Jesus paid it all. Now, we must look at adultery is not the sin of all sins. Murder, abortion, that's the sin of all sin. No, it's not. Yes, abortion is murder, but the Bible also said, he that hates his brother in his heart is a murderer. You forget to quote that New Testament verse out of 1 John, don't you? You can go all activist for abortion is murder and hate somebody in your heart, and you're a murderer too. All have sinned. So Jesus paid it all. Sin does not have degrees, as many pulpits announce. All right, you got 10 people in a room. One person doesn't put God first. That's his, that's his only sin. One person has idolatry set in his heart. That's his only sin. One person uses the Lord's name in vain. One person is saved and won't grow in the Lord. Okay. One person has murdered somebody. That's, that's the only sin he's ever done. Another person has he's lied. One lie. One person has not honored his, his parents. One sin. Only one sin. One person has coveted. And one person has looked at his neighbor goods like, oh, I like to have that. And has taken his wife, the neighbor's wife. That's one sin, adultery. 
You know what those 10 people are in that room? One sin. One sin. I've named off the sin. One sin. You know what all those people are in that room? Oh, the adulterer. Oh, the murder. No, they're all sinners. They all have one sin in common. They disobey God's word. You can't put guy number three ahead of woman number eight. And you can't put woman number eight lower than the, the guy at table seven. And you can't put the guy at table seven standing up on the ladder of the child number three. And you can't put the child number three ahead of number ten. No. All sin is sin. And if you're not redeemed by Jesus Christ and by the blood of the land, which take away the sin, not sins, the sin of the world. If you're not redeemed by the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, you will go to hell. Not because you're an adulterer. Not because you stole the pen at the bank. Not because you lied to your boss about being sick and calling out. Not because your favorite football team just won the Super Bowl. Not because you crunched your knuckles on the engine block and cussed out God's name. Not because you just told your mother to go do something. Not good. You go to hell because you reject Jesus Christ because your sin is not washed by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. You need to be cleansed. And all the sins were placed upon Jesus upon that cross. He suffered and died for our sins. Jesus paid it all. He paid for sins that I didn't have even committed. Which I believe every individual commits every single sin that there can be. I don't know. I don't have scripture about that. But, you know, if I look at the top 10, 10 commandments, I'm not. I'm not doing too well. And if I were to bring my works based on the Ten Commandments to God, I failed. I have God, I broke them all. I know you did. And you know what you need to do with your, with your broken Ten Commandments? What do I need to do? You need the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. You need the blood of the Lamb, which take away the sin of the world. Really? That will cleanse me? That's the only thing will cleanse you. I'll take it. Put that name in the last book of life. Let me hear the angel band cry up and say, hallelujah. And I can say, as far as all my sins, Jesus paid it all. And the devil will try and bring up those old those sins. Hymns. He'll, pray, he'll try to bring up those old sins. I, I have two responses to that, and I'm done. Satan, devil, Lucifer, dragon, gold, serpent, they're under the blood. Though God has forgiven me and God has washed me and cleansed me, I may remember, but God doesn't. Thank you, Lord. And my option number two is, Lord, somehow this thing came up in my life. I was thinking about it. And I was just, I don't know if that sin's under the blood. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about right now. You may be saying, well, I don't know what sin you're talking about. But Lord, if I have never confessed this sin of this person, this individual, this place, or whatever, Lord, I now plead it under the blood of the Lord Jesus. I, I, I'm not sure if it's under the blood. And if it isn't, I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I turn to the devil and say, devil, it's now forgotten. Thank you for reminding me of that so I can bring it to God. I will never have to answer that prayer no more. That sin no more. The sins of Stiley Hayward. Jesus paid it all. Glory to God. I have taken a blood washed bath. Not baptism. Bath and shower and been cleansed by Jesus Christ alone. And there's nothing I can add to it. There's nothing I can do to improve it. 